Hello and welcome to John's Author Diary for the week, ending January the 26th, 2020. I've had a really busy week. This is one of those weeks where it feels like a lot of things have come together. A lot of things have been ticked off my to-do list, so that's always a fantastic feeling. That sense of achievement, of getting things done. So I got my book, Podcasting for Authors, that is now out to the world. My non-fiction book, The Stoic Writer, is also out now. I completed the second draft of Temperance, which is book 14 in my Ravenglass Chronicles series. So I've been going back and forth on that storyline, and I think I ended up changing the ending about three times before I landed on one I was satisfied with. Because some of the events that I feel are necessary for the story, they can come maybe next episode or even the episode after. So this was actually a really difficult episode to write, just because it's possibly the most mystical hallucinogenic thing I've written and hopefully I've prepared the readers enough for this insanity. What I'm hoping is that readers will come away with that feeling of having a lot of questions answered but then wondering what on earth is going to happen next and just adding in those little hints that there's a game changer around the corner, a bit of a twist maybe perhaps. So it took a little bit longer than expected to get this right but I am pleased with how it is now. It reads really well the story flows and then going into the next episode i've got a ton of ideas the next one is called the devil which is card number 15 of the major arcana and it feels now like i'm moving towards the end of cat's story i mean granted there's still at least a hundred thousand words i need to write but all the pieces are starting to get into place for what i hope will be a satisfying ending So as well as the fantasy stuff, I've also had some updates with the Black Death series. So this is a post-apocalyptic one that I'm doing with a co-author. I think we are pretty much ready now with book one. Lynn's been going through all the scenes and making sure everything works properly. He works in a very different way to what I do. And so I think he's got things like timelines on spreadsheets and things like that. So hopefully that'll work really well, having that balance of the kind of analytical storytelling and the more kind of free-flowing stuff that... I tend to go with. So I've read a few books this week. I finished The Obstacle is Away by Ryan Holiday. Really enjoyed that book. Also read a book called Indistractable, which is about dealing with distractions and things like that. There's nothing in there that I'd not read before, but it did give me some cool plugins for Chrome. A few weeks ago, I started using Newsfeed Eradicator on Facebook. So this literally eradicates Newsfeed, replaces it with an inspirational quote. And that means now that... You know, I'm going on Facebook a couple of times a week with a purpose, spending about 15 minutes on there at most, and then getting off there. So that's really good. I've also completely taken Facebook off my phone. There's also a plugin for Twitter, which removes a lot of the things like trending and recommendations and things like that. Same with YouTube as well. I got a plugin to get rid of recommended videos on YouTube. So if I go on YouTube with a purpose, I will find a video, watch it, and then I won't get sent down that rabbit hole. So I'm thinking I might give Twitter one last chance. You know, I'm pretty much done with the site just because I think it magnifies the worst of what people offer the world. I think it rewards tribalism and outrage and all those things that make Twitter a horrible place to be. So what I did, and this required me getting a plugin to get my Twitter back to the classic version of Twitter and then going into Chrome's console in order to unfollow everyone. So now... I follow about 30 people on Twitter. And these are just author friends. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to actually engage. I may, I may not. That whole process might have been a waste of time. But when I do occasionally go on Twitter to check my notifications and things like that, just to make sure no one's got in touch with me and said, hey, I found 20 typos in your book. Which, of course, never happens. (laughs) And some people direct message me with questions and stuff. So I'll try to keep on top of those things. And so far, the platform seems like a more pleasant place because it's not full of screeching people moaning about Trump and Brexit and calling out people for something they said about 30 years ago, or because I have an opinion that's different to someone else. So I've also started reading Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. So I've never read this book before, and I'm about three chapters in, and it's a lot of fun. It's got a great voice, and I'm enjoying the absurdist humour. So we'll see how it goes, but... It's good to get back to fiction. I've not read a fiction book since early December when I finished J. Christoph's Nevernight Chronicles. And that sometimes happens if I read a fiction series that is really good. I find it really hard to start a new novel. 
So this is usually why I tend to go on a bit of a non-fiction binge after reading a good story. I also launched a new podcast this week, so this is called The Stoic Writer. So this is basically a spin-off, an expansion of the book The Stoic Writer. So I'm not sure when you'll be able to see this. This is one of those things where I've submitted the podcast to Apple. Sometimes it can take a few hours to show up, or sometimes it can take a couple of weeks. It depends. Next week, I want to get to work on Temperance. Hopefully, I'll get that finished sooner rather than later, and then I can start planning the next book, which should be a lot of fun. So until next time, cheerio. (music) 